So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at NT query information process, which allows us to query information about the process state and determine whether or not a debugger is attached. If we look at the information presented on Microsoft uh, MSDN article for NT query information process, we'll see that they suggest not using this. That's similar to most NT calls. Um, so you usually have like a Win32 API call that'll call into an NT call, which will call into a ZW kernel call to call NT query information process. We need to use this process called runtime dynamic linking. Um, essentially, we just use load library to get a handle to NT DLL. From there, we can use get proc address to find the address for NT query information process using that get proc address. So let's take a look at what this looks like. Um, so just like all of our other videos, I've commented out all the other anti-debugging checks inside of the gauntlet. Um, and I've only uh, compiled in our NT query information process call. So inside of this call, the very first thing that we're going to do is use load library to get a handle to NT DLL. There's a number of ways to do this, but this is a pretty direct way to do it. Um, once we have that handle, we can call get proc address with that handle uh, and specify the string like of the function that we want to get the address to, which is NT uh, query information. This particular type here is defined inside of our anti debug, and this allows us to define the prototype for this function. Uh, once we have this and we verify that we were actually able to get a correct or valid address back, meaning it just wasn't null, we'll go ahead and get a handle to our current process. And then we're going to make this call. Now, here's where things get a little interesting or tricky. So NT query information process has a number of things um, that it, you can that you pass to it. But one of them being sort of like the most important is this um, second parameter, which is process information class. If we go take a look at the documentation for this, uh, it'll tell us that process information class is a second parameter. And there's a few different options that are that are uh, documented. So process basic information as being a value of zero for this enumeration, process debug port is value seven, and so on and so forth. But this is only part of the picture. This is partially opaque that they don't document everything that you can acquire from this. So rather than using process basic information, we could use process debug port, which will give us sort of the same information. We can actually just check for a debugger using something different. When we're looking at this from a debugging standpoint, and we're actually stepping through code in a debugger, we really just see the um, call to NT query information process, which should throw up the red flags that we're getting some system information or some information about the process where something else is going on. If we look at the second parameter, we'll be able to tell exactly what it's querying for. But here you may actually see that it's querying for something that's not documented. If we go over to a place like Pinvoke, which will tell us more information about these uh, enumerations, there's I think 101 different values that you can get. So this thing will return all sorts of information depending on what you're actually requesting. The most direct way to um, request this information is to just get the process basic information. In this includes a pointer to the PEB or process environment block, which is, you guessed it, the same thing that we've been checking for in a lot of our other checks, like is debugger present, is remote debugger present. These things are um, all sort of revolve around checking that PEB structure. Now, there are other ways that we can do this, again, using different values for this, uh, but they're all basically kind of stem off the same thing. So we're going to check just this one. Uh, note that you could use other ones and you may have to parse or interpret the results sent back differently depending on what information is actually sent back. Right. So when we take a look at this, uh, there are some notes here. Um, I have a link to that Pinvoke page that we just took a look at. Um, also noted that you can use things like process debug port, process debug object handle, and process debug flags. I know for certain will work for catching debuggers. Uh, there are likely others that I haven't experimented with. Uh, but you can check those out. So with NT in query information process, we'll give a, a handle to our own process. We'll ask for the process basic information. Um, we'll give it uh, the address of this process basic information, which is going to be the location of where we want to store this information. Um, that's going to be initialized to all zeros. Um, and this is pretty much it. The return length is going to tell us what the length of that was. Uh, we're not going to use it. So down here, once we make this call, uh, we should really be checking to see up above if NT status was correct. But what we're going to do is I can change this later is P uh, proc basic info dot address basically tells us go ahead and get the address for the PEB 
this was very similar. All of this work basically accomplishes what our old you know, FS30 offset or GS60 offset did in 32 and 64 bit, right? So it's a longer roundabout way of doing basically the same thing. Once we get that pointer to the PEV, we make sure that we actually have a pointer and this didn't return null. Um, if the status was success up here, which I'll go ahead and change up to here after this video, um, we're gonna go ahead and reference the being debugged flag. So we'll take a look at what this looks like in the debugger, but this will be set high. So if that turns out to be the case, um, then we'll go ahead and catch the debugger. Otherwise, we'll have to patch it a little bit differently than we did with is debugger present. Um, so with that, the explanation of this out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks like in the debugger. I already compiled these, so we should be good to go. All right, so let's take a look at the 64-bit version. We go into release, we'll run this. Congratulations, you made it. Let's throw it into a debugger run it and it says we got caught by process debug port which for nt query information process all right so let's rewind this and kind of step forward to that location already had a, a breakpoint on main so we'll step into that some of the things that we're looking for here are of course the load library remember how to had to reference nt query information process we also have our get proc address and then finally we have our get current process um, which is going to allow, allow us to reference the uh, process handle for ourselves. And this call RBX, if we jump in here, notice that it leads to a ZW query information process instead of the NT query information process. We talked about this chain of events being sort of like the Windows 32 API call. But then you have this and usually an NT call and then the ZW call. In 64 bit, there's a call straight to ZW query information process via system call or via syscall, uh, which is a call to the kernel. And then um, on 32-bit, you'll actually see that there's a call from uh, R code into NT query information process, which likely leads down into ZW query information process. So we sort of skip that step in 64-bit. So let's go ahead and head back to where we're currently debugging and we'll make that call. That call returns zero, so that is NT status success. Everything looks good there. Uh, then we take some value off of the stack and we're gonna test that. Um, and let's see here. This, I think this value RCX was the size parameter, uh, if I'm correct, that uh, like the return size value. Now here, the RCX zero, and actually I'm wrong, RCX was the pointer to the uh, process environment block, that's correct. So if we take a look at RCX in the dump, oops, a quick follow and dump. Down here we have the uh, PEB, okay? So the PEB was referenced from this guy, RSP plus 38, which was just pulling the PEB off of the, um, out of the structure that we, we assigned for this. Goes into RCX, now RCX off two, dereferencing that is going to be this one. And remember before, if we take a look at the PEB structure, the third entry, the third byte down into that is, is the, the uh, value uh, being debugged. So right now it's set to one. If I go ahead and modify this and change it to a zero and run, uh, the output that we're going to get is congratulations, you made it. So we had to go to an offset in memory in that structure um, and modify that. So essentially what we're doing is we're peeking into this uh, pointer to proc basic info. That entire structure was set to zero and populated when we made this call. We then had to go to this location, dereference the PEB base address, and then we went there. And then from there, this being debug, peaks three bytes into it uh, to take that value. And that value is what we patched. So we ended up patching this from a one to a zero. Okay, um, So that's pretty much it. Again, there are some gotchas when you start playing around with different values other than process basic information. So if you're going to be working with these guys, you're going to have to interpret the results that come back differently to catch the debugger. Bottom line is it basically looks exactly the same way to somebody who's reverse engineering. So even if you do change it up, it's not gonna make that big of a difference in terms of somebody knowing that something funny is going on with uh, anti-debugging. Let's just go ahead and throw this into a debugger while we still have some time for 32-bit and I'll show you that NT call instead of the ZW call. So again, outside of the debugger, it worked okay. Let's throw this into a debugger. And we got caught as expected. So now let's go ahead and I did not have a breakpoint there. Let's try to run to main. There it is. So, all right, what are we looking for now? Uh, so here's our load library call. Looks good. 
Here's our get proc address. Okay. Here's our get our handle to our current process. And then if we peek into this, now it's a call to NT query information process. That is a call and not a syscall. Um, let's see if we step, of course, I stepped past it instead of stepping into it. But I think eventually that'll lead to a syscall, a CW. Uh, down lower into the NT call. Um, so we did see that NT call on 32, and again, the ZW call on uh, 64. If we continue down here, this is the reference to that here. ECX plus two is gonna be a reference for that is being debugged or is debugged. So let's go ahead and follow that in the dump. Down here, if we peek two into it, so zero, one, and two uh, is one. If I go ahead and change that to zero again and fire it off, the uh, result is going to be congratulations, you made it. So we were able to successfully bypass that anti-debugging check. So I hope you learned something interesting about this. Until next time, happy debugging.